Now, yesterday, we looked at the impact between polling percentage and its impact on election results. In today's section of Do You Know, we will discuss the story of the swing vote and how it impacts election results in India. Now, before we get in, let's get down to the basics first. What is a swing vote? It's essentially a portion or percentage of votes that has a decisive impact on the results of the elections. And this percentage of votes need not be big in a multi-party system. Even a minor change could cause a huge change in the results. Now, India has two major national parties. They've been the central party in coalition governments since 1998. We did not consider the coalition governments of H.T. Devi Gauda or uh, I.K. Gujral between the years of 1996 and 1998, frankly, because it was a coalition of national parties with Congress not taking part in the government. Now let's look at how the BJP's performance has changed in terms of the overall vote share and the swing. The swing for individual parties is marked at vote change. Now, in 1996, the BJP secured 20.29% of total votes polled and got 161 seats. It was the single largest party. But Vajpayee's government could not pass the no-confidence motion. In 1998, BJP increased its vote share to 25.5%, a rise of 5.3%. Now, at that point in time, it ended up winning 182 seats and formed the NDA government. After regional parties pulled out of the NDA in 1999, the very next year, leading to another election, BJP's vote share actually fell by nearly 2%. But they still got 182 seats and formed a stable government at the centre that lasted the entire five-year term. Now let's compare how Congress party did in these three elections, just to see if we can interpret results statistically. Congress, in fact, secured 28.8% of votes in 1996, much above the BJP, but its seats tally fell to just 140. It could not form the government. The point to note here is this. If a party contests a lot of seats alone, its vote share is bound to be higher. But that doesn't mean anything in terms of the number of seats the party can win. In 1998, the vote share of the Congress party fell by 3%. The seats tally rose to 141, but it did not have an alliance in place like the NDA. And the result, the NDA formed the government. In 1999, the Grand Old Party polled 28.3% more than the BJP, but its seats tally fell to 114. And the BJP headed NDA formed the government. Now, these three elections do not help us understand the value of swing votes because the Congress party did not forge strong alliances before 2004 elections when the UPA or the United Progressive Alliance came into existence, whereas the NDA was already a reality. BJP contested in lesser number of seats but had strong regional allies like TDP, the Telugu Desam Party, DMK, BJD and TMC, which added to its seats tally overall. Let's now take a look at the last three general elections of India where it has been a clear-cut battle of alliances. In 2004, Congress's vote share decreased by 1.6 percentage, but it got 145 seats and was the single largest party. It formed a coalition government. In 2009, a mere two percentage positive vote swing helped Congress party to increase its seat share to 206 and the UPA2 government ruled for five years. In 2014, the scenario changed. And how? The Congress party lost 9% of its vote share, which translated to a fall of 162 seats. The overall tally was an abysmal 44 seats. Compare this to the BJP. The party lost 1.5% of votes in 2004 and was reduced to 138 seats. In 2009, the party lost a further 3.5 percentage votes and could not form the government. Cut to 2014, a 12.5 percentage increase in vote share helped it to add 166 seats to the 116 
It had in 2009. And that was clearly the Modi wave. The result, 282 seats, absolute majority. That's what vote share changes can do in a coalition. The phenomenon of swing votes is best demonstrated by the alliances. In 2004, UPA gained 1.9 percentage of votes, meaning a swing of just 1.9 percentage in UPA's favor and a negative swing of minus 3.8 percentage against NDA, leading to a change in the government. Ditto in 2009, UPA gained 1.8 percentage of votes, while 8.7 percentage of votes swung against NDA. The result? A resounding victory for the UPA. And this is how elections in alliances generally work. Small numbers make a big difference. The 2014 elections were one of a kind. There was 14 percentage vote swing against UPA and 14 percentage vote swing for NDA. Absolute majority for Narendra Modi. The 2014 elections was not one of swing votes. It was a clear wave and the numbers help us understand it better. Out of the 30.8 percentage votes that swung towards NDA, the BJP alone gained 12.5 percentage. That explains the margin and the scale of victory. So, if you're asking what exactly is the point over here, in general, when there is no wave towards any particular party or alliance, the swing vote could decide the government. Besides, in a multi-cornered race with many regional players, the analysis gets a little tricky. As the results come out on the 23rd of May, it would be a great exercise to understand how the vote swung and in favor of which party, in which state. That would help us interpret the results better. And with that, we've come to the end of this edition of India Election Watch. Thank you so much for watching. This is Krishna Kumar signing off. Good night.